Vaya un namo bhagavati vasudevaya om namo bhagavati vasudevaya. So I'd like to welcome everybody. Today is a very auspicious day of Vasant Panchami. Not just auspicious because of Vasant Panchami, but great souls have come and gone on this day. And we will be trying to talk about all of them today and tomorrow because there's so many of them, we're going to have to split it into two satsangs. So we'll start first with uh, Karuna Bandha Mataji, who will talk about yes, uh, Vasant Panchami. And you can share the screen if you have anything to show, huh? Mataji. Okay, Prabhu. Uh, hi, Hi, Krishna, everyone. Hi, Krishna. Today we are celebrating Vasan Panchami. Uh, it's the it's on the Shukla Panchami or the Gaura Panchami, five days after the Amavas here normally. And according to astrologers, it is a very auspicious day to start new work or anything new. And I remember in 2006, uh, we had our Griha Provision, our new home. So it's considered very auspicious to do new things, start new things. So why do we celebrate Basan Panchami? In Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says that among the seasons, He is Vasan, uh, when the flowers blossom. This is in chapter 10, text 35. The spring season. Lord Krishna says that we can see him or feel his presence across this universe through his creation because from him everything emanates. From his power or shakti. Everything is part of himself. We can thus connect to and remember the Supreme Lord through his creations and festivals, just like the Vasant Panchami. The appearance of Goddess Saraswati also uh, falls on the same day. The Goddess Saraswati, the Goddess of Vani, sound, music, speech, and Vidya, knowledge. Lord Krishna says that he is the Adhyatmic Vidya, the same in chapter 10 itself, verse 32. So, Lord Krishna is the Adhyatmic Vidya, the knowledge of the self, the soul, his eternal, uh, our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord, and the knowledge about who is the Supreme Lord also. So, Saraswati Mata helps us help all those who are in search of the Supreme Truth. So, it's very nice to uh, seek his, her blessings today. There is also the river Saraswati, which descends on earth and flows near Badrinath, near Lord Vyasadeva's ashram. Lord Krishna performs also the Vasant Raslila on Govardhan Hill on Vasant, Vasant Panchami day. And there was a full moon on that day. So curiously, normally on, uh, on the fifth waxing day, waxing moon day we don't have full moon but on that day there was full moon uh, at night when Sri Krishna was performing the Vasant Rasti and Govardhan. Hi Krishna. Thank you uh, Karuna for a uh, a quick run through uh, wasn't much good information as well. A lot mm. of information I didn't know. So thank you so much for that. Really mm. good. Yeah. And uh, um, we've been getting a, um, a photos of uh, deities all over the world and they're all dressed in yellow today. So again, mm. this must be the color for Vasant Panchmi everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, anybody else, any comments on Vasant Panchami? Anything that you may have mm. been celebrating in the past, which mm. you'd like you like to remember share? from your childhood? Haribo, this is when they do the kite flying. No, that, that is uh, Makar Shakranti. Oh, okay. Mm. 
Oh, how's Aruna, by the way? Yeah. She's oh, good, great, 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 great. I'm glad you're there, Aruna. Thank you. Very good, very good, mm -hmm. very good. Prabhuji? Yes. Yes, we have always associated Vasant Panchami with a sort of like a happiness mm. and uh, new beginnings, even from the childhood. And I think yellow signifies the the new crops, which mm. is sort of uh, in, the, in the spring or Vasant Rutu in India. Mm. So yes. I think that's, that's what it means. That's the flowers. Right. Mm. It's always a happy time for mm. some punch and any new things. There's no more necessary needed on this day. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is also the celebration of uh, the start of the celebration of Holi Festival. No. Okay. I've read, I've read that on the internet. Okay. Right. I don't know about that. Yeah, mm. yeah. So we had a few new beginnings today. We appointed the solicitor to. Uh, <laughs> begin the work on the property, to buy the property. We also set up a, a company under, uh, under the charity, uh, which will uh, hold the property. And also we appointed two new trustees today, uh, Naveen Koshla, a very uh, nice businessman, and also Ashwin Soni, who is uh, who helped with the, uh, not even you'll know this Crowley Sanatan Mandir? Yes, I was there and I sort of, uh, in the opening, I was there. Oh, you uh, were there? When, Doc, when uh, Ramesh Bhai Oza did the Sapta there. Okay. And we did, uh, yes, all the auspicious things. I was, I was there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> so he's, he's joining us as trustee. Yes, he's a trustee there. I think I, I know him by his name. Yeah. And probably if I see his photo, but he was, yes, he rings a bell, Ashwin Joshi, Sony. Yeah, so he's joining us as well as trustee. And uh, because he, 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 he phoned on the other day saying, how can I help? So, and his mood was so wonderful. I thought you can definitely help us. Yes, yes I know. And, um, yeah, and they started same as we are going to start. So very small beginning, and then they built it up. And he was there from the beginning. So in that way, he, we will get a lot of his experience. All the mistakes they made, we'll probably make them again with him. <laughs> so, all right, thank you. So, Riyanj, Riyanj yes. He's not there. I think he's oh. left. No, he yeah, he's having problems with okay, the internet. Okay, hang on, he's just, yeah, he's just joining. He's again. having problems with the internet. He's just joining again. Yeah, he was having problems yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, give me a minute or two. Can you hear us, Rinanj? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Chitrik and... Uh... Yeah, he's just joined. Okay. Yeah, Rinanj, can you hear us? Yes, Prabhuji. So okay. if you'd like to start, you can. What, Prabhuji? Yes, on Saraswati. You're talking about Saraswati? Yes, Mataji. Yeah, so you, you can do that now. Mantras also? Yes, yes. If you want, yes. You can share the screen if you want to as well. Roji, can you wait one second? Sure, yeah. we can wait. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Is that enough time, Riyaj? <laughs> Oh, 
Start, Prabhuji. You can start. You, you ready? Yeah. If you yeah. want time, we can do something else first, Rianj. Yes, Prabhuji, you can do something. Okay. okay. So, Chitra. Chitra, would you like to uh, do your presentation? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Great. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to share on the screen. Okay. Oh, that's okay. a short story. Sure. Um, so, Vishnu Priya is the... Vishnu Priya Devi is the second wife of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. She is the, she was the daughter of Pandit Sanatan Mishra. Uh, they got married when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was around 17 or 18. Um, Vishnu Priya Devi used to bathe at the river every day to purify herself. And there she would meet mm. Sachimata. So Sachimata knew that she would make a good wife for her son the moment the matchmaker proposed the marriage. So after they got married, then. Very soon after, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to take sannyas. So they did not actually spend a lot of time together. Some people say that Vishnu Priya Devi is the reincarnation of Satyabhama, the third wife of Krishna, and that her father was the reincarnation of Satya Bhama's father. Mm. So it's basically a recreation of the same family. And that's about it for Vishnu Priya. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Well done. I think uh, Mahaprabhu was also very naughty when he used to go to the Ganga. Was this the case? Was it the case with Vishnu Priya or was it the first, first, one. first one? Yeah, maybe, yeah, first one. Uh, he met his first wife at the Ganga. Ah, yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> okay, good, good. Anything else, anybody else on this topic? Okay, so Riyanj, uh, are you ready now? Hare Krishna. Yes, yes Sandulika Mataji. If uh, Riyanj is not uh, ready, I can uh, sure. do mine. Sure. But give the give the child push. I'll give him the chance. Give him the time also. <laughs> Riyanj, are you ready now? Yes, Mataji. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Riyanj. Go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Today I am going to recite three, three important shlokas about Saraswati Devi. Mm -hmm. Can I present my screen, Prabhuji? Yes, you can. Go you ahead, can. go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Can you see my screen and yes. can you can yes. hear me? Yes, yes, Rians. Everything's good. Carry on. Okay, Mataji. Saraswati Namastopyam Varade Kamarupini Vitya Rambam Karishyami.
We lost you. Prabhuji? Yeah, carry on. Finished. Finished, Prabhuji. Okay. Did you want to say anything at all about Saraswati, Mata? Yes, Prabhuji. Go ahead. I can, I can tell someone, Prabhuji. Can I tell someone, Prabhuji? You want to tell some? Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, go ahead. Again, can you see my screen, Prabhuji? Yes. Uh, the uh, that I want to tell is that Mother Saraswati is wife of Lord Brahmaji, and and she is one of a uh, goddess or oh, uh, one of goddess who gives us vidya means knowledge. Uh, and and she always sits on a lotus and all and always think of lord krishna whole day and, and and she has four hands in in her first hand in in her first hand she always always thinks of krishna and in second and third hand she always she always put her veena and in her fourth hand she 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 holds a book and and Have you finished, Riyant? Yes, Prabhuji. Well done. Thank you so much. You did good. And I like the Thank way you, you Prabhuji. Said, I like the what you said. She's always thinking of Krishna. That's absolutely right. Well done. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay. Indulika Maji. Hare Krishna Babaji, yes, once again. Oh. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Good. Okay, so today I'm talking. I'm going to talk on the life of Pundarika Vidyadidhi. Um, 
So Pundarika Vidyanidhi, his father was named Paneshwara and his mother was Ganga Devi. So he was born on Vasan Panchami, so which we just talked about, we just heard about. And uh, that's the fifth day of waxing moon in the month of Marga in Chatra, Chakra Shala in Chittagon. So Vidyanidhi was a zamindar and uh, he was extremely rich and very pure in his actions. So he was a Brahman whose lineage was extremely respectable. Sometimes he stays in Chittagun and sometimes in Naudvipa. So he was a disciple of Madhamendapuri, and that is from uh, Prima Vilash, where the, it appears. And then um, the Lord glorifies uh, Pundarika. Sri Pundarika Vidyanidhi came to Naudvip because he wished to live by the banks of the uh, Ganges. And Mahaprabhu knew prior to his coming that he had such a desire. And one day in the assembly of devotees, starting, he started calling, um, Pundarika start, uh, he, uh, Mahaprabhu started calling Pundarika, my friend, my father, and he was crying. So uh, his associate, when, when his associate asked him why he was crying in this way, so the Lord described Pundarika Vidyanidhi to them in the following way. His character is quite extra extraordinary. Just by hearing his name, the whole world is purified, but he dresses and looks just like a materialistic person in the midst of the adornment of the um, life of pleasure. So he, he was very rich and he was always um, well dressed and everything, but um, no, that's why many people did not um, uh, realize that he was a great devotee. So no one is able to recognize him as the Vaishnava, yet he remains constantly merged in the deep ocean of devotion for Krishna. So he never um, bathed in the Ganga because he was afraid to touch the holy water with his feet, which he would respect. He would only go uh, to have darshan of Ganga at night. And that also from a very um, uh, long distance, not near, because he, he could not bear to see people uh, engage in offensive behavior to the Ganga by gargling, cleaning the teeth, their hair, and having bath in their waters. So he never goes there during the daytime. He would go uh, at night. So he never engages in worship of the deity without having taken a drink of, of Ganga water. Because of his apparently materialistic behavior, people are not able to recognize him. But uh, that is Mahaprabhu saying, I feel unwell because I am not able to see him. That is Mahaprabhu narrating and telling about the good qualities of uh, Pundarika Vidyanidhi. So Lord Goranga, <clears throat> uh, Lord Goranga, he stood up and started dancing mm -hmm. and calling out, Pundarik, my father, Pundarik, my friend, my father, when will I see you? So, so Gadadhar and um, the, all the older disciples, they were just uh, watching. And then um, that is from um, Chaitanya Bhagavata. So Gadadhar became Pundarik's disciple. So Sri Gadadhar Pandit, Gadadhar Pandit Goswami, Mukunda Datta and Vasudeva Datta were all originally from Chittagong. And so they were acquainted with Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Indeed, Gadadhar Pandit's father, Madhavanda Misra, was his good friend. And Mukunda Datta knew his transcendental personality. And that um, he was a Vaishnava, but Gadadhar did not, even though he was from the same town. That was, of course, a pretense for the sake of the Leela, because if he, if he said that, he knew that there would be no Leela. So when Pundarik was living in Naudweep, Mukunda Datta told Gadadhar one day that he wanted to introduce him to a great Vaishnava. So Shira Gadadhar Pandit Goswami was a brahmachari from childhood and extremely detached from the senses and ascetic in his lifestyle. When he saw Pundarik sitting on comfortable cushions covered in sweets as white as a foam of milk and wearing very expensive clothes and perfume smoking from a hookah and generally surrounded uh, by all the trappings of essential lifestyle, he was unable to recognize him as a Vaishnava. That means that um, uh, Gadara Pandit was unable to recognize Pundarika as a Vaishnava. So indeed he left, he let him down because uh, of the, um, uh, like of the outer vision. He, he didn't realize how great personality he was. He was just looking at him and he was judging him. 
So Mukunda could see from Gadara's face what was going on through his head. And in order to, in order to bring out um, Pundarika in a mood, he recited two verses from the Bhagavatam that enkindled the flames of love for Krishna. And th the verses are here. Uh, please excuse me if I cannot pronounce uh, correctly, right? Aho bhakyam sthana kalakutam jigham saya saya paya yad api sa asadvi leba gatim tatri yuchitam tatu anyam kam va dayalum saharanam prapadye. And the second one is putna loka balaghani rakshasi vidhi rasana jigham saya pi harai sthanam. So here it says it, it is these um, these two verses are found in Sriman Bhagavatam and the uh, uh, chapters and uh, cantos are there. So the sister of Bakasura, the evil Putana, was sent on a mission to kill Krishna. He drank the uh, Kalkuta poison mixed with her breast milk, and despite her evil intention, awarded her the position of a nurse as Amba, Ambika Kilimba in Golo who is more merciful than that than he, that I should take shelter of. So these, these two verses, mean, this is a meaning. So as soon as um, uh, Pundarik heard these, these two verses in glorification of, of Krishna's mercy, Sri Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he cried out, Ha Krishna, and he fell to the floor in a swoon. He began to roll on the floor in ecstasy, knocking off the hookah and tearing his clothes. So here he is crying, just seeing how uh, uh, Putna was trying to kill Krishna. So when he saw this transcendental system of love on Pundarik's body, Gadada realized that he had committed an offense, which he began to regret. He decided that the only way to rid himself of this offense would be to take initiation from Pundarika. And he related this idea to Mukunda, who then communicated his desire to Pundarika, who happily set a date for the auspicious act. Mahaprabhu also gave his approval, and so Gadadhar took uh, mantra initiation from Pundarika Vidyanidhi. So in Krishna Leela, Sri Pundarika Vidyanidhi is Vrishabhanu, and Sri Gadadhar Pandit Goswami is Radha. Because of his identity as Vrishabhanu, Mahaprabhu would call out to him as father, when he was himself in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So the deep affection from their previous lives relation became apparent between, between Pundarika and Gadadhar. So no one can understand the pastime of Vaishnavas without the mercy. Even the Pundarik Vidyanidhi was a great Vaishnava. He kept it a secret and appeared just like a materialistic person. One cannot recognize a Vaishnava through any superficial examination. So, uh, Krishna's devotee are also sometimes reluctant to reveal their real self to those who are unworthy and thus make a pretense of being ordinary materialistic persons. So Gauranga Mahaprabhu is also sometimes called the Prachanna Avatara or hidden incarnation. In the same spirit, Pundarika put on the shadow of being sensualist for those who were capable of being deceived by someone's external appearance. Just like the beginning we could see. So um, one day Pundarik Vidyanidhi came to see Mahaprabhu when it was already quite late at night. As soon as he saw the Lord, he was so overcome by love that he could not even pay his obeisances. Mahaprabhu was similarly to, anxious to see his most dear devotee, Pundarik, and he immediately took him to his breast and washed him with his tears of love. When the other devotees heard Mahaprabhu cry and call Pundarik father, and treasure of love, they knew that he, he was most dear to him. Pundarik Vidyanidhi was also known to Mahaprabhu, as, Mahaprabhu's associate as Acharya Nidhi. So there's a pastime here. Jagannath slaps Pundarika. So on the, on the Oriana Shasti festival, Jagannath's servant dressed him in a cloth which still had starch in it. That means he didn't wash the cloth. He just bought it and, and dressed it. So Sri Pundarik Vidyanidhi was a pure such acharya, example, attached to the proper etiquette of Vaishnavism. When he observed this custom, he did not feel happy about it and said to his friend Swarup Damodar, why do they give this unwashed clothes to the Lord? So Swarup Damodar answered that the Supreme Lord is beyond the rules and regulation 
and uh, uh, have become general custom and that therefore there was no fault. We did indeed did not find this uh, conclusion satisfying. And he countered by saying, that may be true for the Lord himself, but his servant should follow the rules and the scriptures. So um, this uh, Sri Vigraha of the Lord is beyond the material quality. So you can say this, uh, this of him, but his servant are not of the same nature as he. So we have to judge whether their behavior is proper or improper. So Vidyanidhi, um, he, Vidyanidhi is dear associate and beyond any fault. But once again, we see that the Lord teaches particular lesson through his devotees. Here we wish to show that um, we have no right to make judgment or to find fault with the behavior of, of Jagannath devotees. That night, an angry Jagannath came to Pundarik Vidyanidhi and gave him a dream vision. Vidyanidhi was frightened when he saw the anger of the Lord. He saw both Jagannath and Balaram slap him on each of his cheeks. And he started to cry out, Krishna, save me, Krishna, save me. Forgive me my offense, Jagannath. So Jagannath said to him, there is no end to your offensiveness. Just as there is no question of pure or impure in my case, the, the same hold true to my servants. You were staying here, you should know all this. If you thought that it was impure, then why did you stay, stay at all? Go home then. And if you want to maintain your purity, uh, so you, you can go home, you don't have to stay here. So when he woke up in the morning, the devotees saw the marks on the Lord, on, of the Lord's slaps on his cheek, which had swollen as a result, uh, and they started to laugh at him. The pastime shows um, just how dear Sri Pundarit Vidyanidhi was to Jagannath and to Mahaprabhu. For the Lord only comes to the dearest devotees to personally punish them in this way. So Swarup Damodar was overwhelmed with joy and said that he did not know any such instance where the Lord had punished a man in the dream, but that day he saw it with his own eyes. He asked if there, there was any, any fortunate man as Pundarit in the free worlds. So he joyfully praised Pundarit just as a friend felt delighted at the well-being of his friend. So Rudra Damodar thought himself extremely lucky because of Pundarit's good fortune. So the deities of Lakshmi Govinda installed by Pundarik still exist today in his birthplace on the and on an earthen pitcher bearing Pundarik's handwriting is also there. And on the upper part of the temple, there are two plagues containing Sanskrit slokas. Those um, though damaged uh, severely by fire, the text can still be read with some effort. In the archives of the Chittangun, the name of Pundarik is, is found. And the 13th generation, a uh, descendant of his family lives in Mekala. And this is a um, picture of angry Jagannath. Pundari Goswami Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Yeah, brilliant. That good. was really good. Yeah. yeah, really good. Thank you. Well done. Okay, so. Um, Time for one more. Yeah. If you want. Um, one more, but. Uh, yeah. Um, let's just have a check who else there is, actually. Madhusudan Babu, I was thinking, which one at Chakravati? There's quite a bit, isn't there? Haribo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Haribo. All right. I tell you what, why do, do you want to make a start and then finish off tomorrow? Because this is quite a bit, isn't it? Which one at Chakravati? What do you uh, think? It depends. I've done a bit of presentation and give a talk on it. I can do it tomorrow if you want, if, if you feel. I think so, because uh, he's one of the one of the most important um, acharyas in this line. So mm -hmm. let's take our time on this one. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, no problem. I'll do yeah. it tomorrow. Yeah, Yeah, because he's, uh, mm. he's important. Yeah, I'll have to share slides and I'll yeah, yeah. a bit more. Yeah. Um, I've done a bit of research, so you know, done good. Done, okay, done, fantastic. There, so yeah, yeah. Let's take our time on that one. You know, if you want to take a bit of time and yeah, anybody else wants to, any, anything? Yeah, there's yeah. two more. Ragunandan. I don't know. Did anybody take that on? No, thank you. Oh, I have it. Okay, <laughs> twenty-one past. No, um, we can finish that off tomorrow. tomorrow as well. Yeah, three tomorrow. Then. Yeah, we can do it tomorrow. So, um, yeah. Okay then, good. Hare Krishna. So let's stop with that. Any questions, any comments actually?
Anybody like to share anything about the pastimes that you've heard? Surinder, anything you'd like to share? Hare Krishna, Ranga, Mitai Gaur, Hare Gaur. Hare Krishna. Yes, so uh, Pandarika Mah Vidyanidhi Maharaj, he is uh, the incarnation of uh, Vrishabhanu mm. Maharaj, the father of Shrimati Radharani. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> there is a pastimes in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, Mukunda Prabhu, uh, he wanted uh, Gadadhar Pandit uh, to, to take Gadadhar Pandit to have a darshan uh, of uh, Pundarika Vijanidhi Maharaj. So <clears throat> then uh, they both uh, go to see uh, to the place of uh, uh, Pundarika Vijanidhi. And then when Gadadhar Pandit he arrived there, they, he saw. Uh, Pundarika Vidhanidhi, he had a long hair with a scented oil and um, he was, uh, uh, like he was uh, smoking a hookah as well and uh, like that. So at that time he didn't appreciate the uh, great spiritual position of Pundarika Vidhanidhi and then uh, he left. And then he explained, he, he goes to uh, for Chaitanya and he said like, you know, he, he, he narrates the incident to Lord Chaitanya that Mukunda took him to, see, to have darshan of a great devotee. But then when he went, he saw Pundarika Vidyanidhi like uh, in external appearance, he appeared like a materialistic person. So then Goranga Mahaprabhu explains the uh, uh, the great uh, exalted position of uh, Pundarika Vidhanidhi and advised him because he said like, oh, in this way you have committed some offense. The great exalted devotee. So uh, I, I advise you to take uh, Harinam Diksha, initiation from Pundarika Vidhanidhi. So then uh, Gadadhar Pandit become the disciple of Pundarika Vidhanidhi. Uh, it's like Mukunda, uh, he took uh, Gadadhar Pandit second time and then Mukunda Prabhu, he recited verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he, uh, Pundarika Vidyanidhi, when he heard this verse, then he started exhibiting the symptoms of uh, ecstasy. He started rolling on the ground and tearing his clothes and etc. Because of uh, uh, great spiritual emotions uh, he felt in Krishna consciousness. Yes, that much I remember, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Nitai Gaur, Hare Gaur. Thank you so much. That was good. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? Any Anybody else would like to share anything or any questions? Hare Gaur, just want to say that everybody who put an effort was brilliantly done. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wish I could do it. <laughs> you Hare can. Krishna. Hare Krishna. You have. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so, uh, just, just a quick comment. It's quite oh. interesting to listen about Pundrik Vidyanidhi, who's uh, living a very kind of opulent life because he's in that position, you know, wealth and sound like a materialistic person. And there are many devotees and personality like that, you know, you can't recognize them as Vaishnava. When I was listening to another pastime of another um, Shamcher and Das, you know, was also very, very powerful at that time. And he actually stood up against the Mughals. But in his personal life, he was a very, very um, advanced devotee. And he was a disciple of Sukhdev Goswami. He was uh, initiated at that Sukhdev, but whether the tree under which Sukhdev Goswami speaks, Shimad Bhagavatam. So it's a long, very, very long pastime. I was listening to the Katha. And then um, uh, you know, he actually still got his ashram in Delhi. Uh, he's a bit of a, like a parampara, you know, but it's amazing. But he lived a very opulent life. He was almost like a king, you know, and he was also very, um, I would say, you know, you need, you knew yoga and all sorts of cities, but a bit of a mystic character as well. But anyway, these Vaishnavas are amazing characters. But this is obviously, you know, 
Pundrik Vidyanidhi associated with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. I think you should stop that. Okay, so we can go 